Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Liddy and we're going to be doing the long-awaited manga collection tour. So we recently hit 1000 subscribers so I just want to thank everyone for subscribing and supporting my videos. It means so much to me and yeah I'm really excited to film this video because you guys voted for this one to come out this week so yeah here we are. I have in total around 770 manga on my shelf at the moment and I recently did a small reorganization so this is what it's kind of looking like at the moment and then we have some more shelves behind me but yeah I'm really liking how everything looks at the moment and I'm excited to share it with you. I also want to let you know that I will be briefly mentioning some of the series that I have. I won't be going into too much detail with each series because obviously I have a lot here so that would take way too long if I talked about every series in detail but I will definitely let you know if I've read it and if I've enjoyed it and if I do have a brief synopsis for you I will do that. But yeah I hope you enjoy this video. So I'm starting here on my Shoujo Josage shelf at the top. I have some business proposal cards here that I'm moving out but here we have Bring It On by Peke Gyeong. This is a manhwa that I bought quite a long time ago actually. I think it's been a few years. But yeah, I read this one actually ages ago so I'm not 100% sure what it is about. I don't really remember and I haven't reread it but as well it's been on my shelf for ages. It's, you can see the yellowing. And then next we have A Sign of Affection here by Sue Morishita. This one is obviously a very popular shoujo manga series and it's about a deaf girl Yuki who basically falls in love with a guy who is very interested in languages and likes traveling all over the world and it's kind of their story and it's really cute. The covers on this are really nice too. Yeah, I definitely prefer this story than Sue Morishita's other work, Short Cake Cake. I did not enjoy that one and I actually sold that series. And then we have Night of the Ice. I also have not read this series yet, but I know it's about ice skating and childhood friends. And it is a Jose. And it is on the wrong way around. <laughs> I probably have quite a few series where they won't be in the right order, so apologies in advance. And then we have Watakoi, Love is Hard for Otaku, Volumes 1 to 6. This is completed. This one is about two childhood friends who are really into games and gaming and they rather game than find love. But then one day they just decide to start dating and it's kind of a slice of life, daily life drama of what they get up to. And they also have two friends and one of the friends or colleagues likes cosplaying and stuff like that happens. I also have not started this yet but I got it for really cheap across a lot of used bookstores so I decided to pick it up and I have seen the anime and really enjoyed the anime so I decided to pick it up in manga format. And then we have My Next Life as a Villainous Side Story. This is a side story about the girls in this story so about these girls and they all pretty much have feelings for this main character Bakarina and it follows their story. I'm not exactly sure what this particular story entails but I am excited to read it as I do really like the main story and then when we have though I am an inept villainous tale of the butterfly rat body swap in the maiden court this one is also a villainous manga I don't think it's a izakai though because it's more about a body swap two maiden court ladies end up swapping bodies because of some magic spell and then we have utsutoki rhetoric this one is also a mystery shoujo manga. She has the ability to hear lies when spoken, so it follows her and she teams up with some other guy to solve mysteries and I think there's like a hint of romance in this, so excited to start this one as well. And then here kind of starts my villainous slash izekai stories. So we have cross-dressing villainous Cecilia Sylvie over here. This one is also about a girl who basically has a bad ending. So she cross-dresses as a boy so that she can avoid that fate. So she turns into a boy here. And we have I'm the villainess, so I'm taming the final boss. And then we have the dark history of 
the reincarnated villainess this one also i got because it was really cheap on world of books i'm not 100 sure what this one is about but it's a villainess so i got it and then we have accomplishments of the duke's daughter another i think this one is a villainess but i don't know if it's an izakai yeah so this one is an izakai and instead of chasing after men to avoid any kind of bad fate she is basically trying to save her father's kingdom so this one is a little bit more political i heard it's a little more dense as well so we'll see if i enjoy that one and then we have another one which is i swear i won't bother you again i've talked about this one in my previous hauls as well and then we have magic artisan dahlia wilts no more clearly i haven't read this one because it still has a sticker but i got it from forbidden planet for a free for two offer but i heard this one is quite good and it I think it is an izakai. Then we pretty much have the izakai that everyone knows about, which is my next life as a villainess or roots lead to doom. This is kind of where the whole villainous trend kind of started. Bakarina, I've talked about it before. I've watched the anime and absolutely loved it. I still haven't finished the manga yet, so I need to get on this. I have a lot that I bought and haven't read. Who can relate and then we come on to the next shelf which continues my shoujo and jose and we have as miss beezlebub likes volumes one and two and then i have card captor sakura clear card this one i've been collecting and pretty much bar one volume i got these all used on water books for under six pounds which is amazing so i've only been looking out for these volumes when they're used this one is a continuation of the original card captor sakura series i think it follows them when they're in middle school or high school and then we have kaiju girl caramelize one to six this one is also ongoing and this one is about a girl who when she feels really heightening emotions she turns into a kaiju a godzilla like creature and it kind of follows that story this one is interesting it's actually published in a seinen magazine but it but it has all the shoujo s styles and speaker Aoki even said that she was asked to write in her normal shoujo-like way so yeah it was very interesting and then we have love of kill volumes one to nine i have two but i was reading it so it's not on the shelf but yeah this one is a really interesting one i don't know why number four has such a different spine i feel they could have done something better with that spine but yeah, this one is a Jose and it's like an action romance, but the romance is very, very light. It's about Chateau, a famous assassin who basically is looking out for bounties and Rangha, who is also an assassin and he constantly keeps colliding with her and bribes her with information on the bounties so that he can have a date with her. And then next we have Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. This one is also a shoujo about a girl who gets sacrificed to the bees but then finds out that he doesn't actually kill the sacrifices and takes her as his wife to lead the country and there's a lot of politi political machinations that happen within this story. And then we have one, two, one and two volumes of Vampire Dormitory. This one I actually dropped because I didn't really enjoy it after volume three so i actually really enjoyed the first one because it made me laugh a lot but then it just got really convoluted and very silly as it went on so i have dropped this series but it was fun for the first few volumes but yeah it's basically about this girl who disguises herself as a guy and then she runs into this vampire and he lets her stay with her due to certain circumstances and then he sucks her blood and everything and he thinks he's a guy so yeah it's a bit of a gender bender vampire romance story with a love triangle and yeah and then we got the white cat's revenge plotted against the dragon king's lap volumes one two and three this one is also an izakai where a girl basically gets izakai'd with one of her childhood friends who is basically obsessed with her into another world and then she finds out that she has a lot of magical powers because of her being gifted in some way and she can also transform into a cat because of a magical bracelet and 
some interesting things happen. This one was actually really good. I really enjoyed this one. So if you like really sweet Isekai stories, I would recommend this one. And then up here we have seventh time loop. The villainess enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy. This one is really good. I read the first volume. I haven't continued it yet, but I really enjoyed the first volume. It's basically about a girl who constantly gets killed when she turns 20 and then she instead of crying and complaining about it she uses each life that she time loops into to create a different life for herself so maybe one life she becomes a maid and then one life she becomes like a military combat person and then in one life she becomes like a merchant and makes lots of money so it's really cool and then in her seventh life she gets a proposal from the man who kills her every time she turns 20 and so she plots to get on his good side so that she can live a carefree life and try to live i definitely recommend this one if you like izakai style elements as well as villainous i really like this one she is really the main girl is really self-sufficient and i really like the stories that she goes through. and then i have my happy marriage and this one is probably my favorite shoujo of the year or last year and i definitely recommend this one it is so good it is a really heartbreaking and really lovely story about a girl who kind of goes through healing and trauma from things that her family did to her and then she gets married off to a guy who's quite stoic who is known to be quite merciless but in the end he kind of warms up to her and you find out that he is not as mean and cold as you would expect and it follows that it's really good the side characters in here are really cute and there are some really evil characters in here too that will make you really mad but it is really good i highly recommend this one and my number two has shipped so i'm hoping to get that soon and then we have the case files of jeweler richard one and two this one is a interesting manga about jewelry and jewels and then we have the most heretical last boss queen one and two this one is also a villainous and then we have the savior's book cafe story in another world i read volumes one and two and absolutely loved it it's so sweet this one is about a girl in her 30s or above 30s who gets transported in another world and and she sets up a book cafe and there's a guy that comes and meets her and they kind of start something special and it's super cute highly recommend this one if you want a really cute izakai romance next one we have is the saint's magic power is omnipotent i think this is about a girl who has quite powerful magical abilities this is also an izakai and yeah looking forward to trying that one the next one we have here is The Wolf Boy Is Mine, Omnibus Volumes 1 and 2. This one is by the same mangaka who did Love in Focus and a new one that those not so sweet boys. I think a lot of people like this one though, so I got both the omnibuses. And it finishes in these omnibuses, so I thought I might as well try them out. And then we come down to this shelf here. So we got the first volume of Kami Sama Kiss. This one I'm pretty sure a lot of shoujo lovers and readers know about. And then I have the first volume of Kimi ni Todoke. These are getting reprinted slowly, so I'm starting to collect this. I watched the anime, loved it, and I also read it when I was in my teens, and I really enjoyed it as well. It's just a sweet story about a girl called Sawako who basically has really long black hair and gets mistaken for Sadako from the ring. But then someone in her school who is quite popular and refreshing notices her and really sees her for who she is. And then next we have is Lovesick Ellie by Fujimomo. This one is looks really cute. I also have not started this one, but it's about a girl who has a Instagram or Twitter account called Lovesick Ellie. And she kind of spills all her perverted thoughts on there. And this guy who she tweets about, finds out that she has this account because she drops her phone and then they kind of start something there. Then we have Kakuryu, Bed and Breakfast for Spirits. And this one is a really fun shoujo series where this girl gets transported into a otherworldly area because she gives this guy food and touches the scroll that he leaves behind and yeah she basically tries to adapt to living in this world by setting up a bed and breakfast for spirits 
I've only read up to volume 1 so far and excited to continue this series. I've been waiting for volume 2 and 3 for a while so I never ended up continuing it because I was waiting for so long. But I'm definitely excited to continue this one and it is ongoing at the moment so yeah. And then we have The King's Beast Volumes 1 to 7. This is by Rei Toma who is very well known in the shoujo manga verse which... She has done, I think it's Water Dragon's Bride and also Dawn of the Arcana. I didn't like either of those series, but I am enjoying this one a lot more. And it is about Arjun, who are these people with like ears. And they are basically shunned in the societies because they have like magical abilities and the humans want to keep them bound they are treated as either slaves, put in the military, and Arjun women are basically sold into a life of slavery and prostitution. So it's really sad, but this person, girl, disguises as a guy so that she can infiltrate the palace to seek revenge on her brother who died at the hands of the people in the palace court. And yeah, there's a lot of political intrigue in this and some Chinese mythological as well as palace court drama in there. So yeah, it's been quite interesting. And I heard the later volumes start to get a little bit more intense. So I'm excited to try this. I've read up to volumes one to four. So yeah, excited to continue this one. And then we have two to three of QQ Sweeper and one to 15 of Queen's Quality. This is a interesting series about a group of people who can basically sweep away bad omens and that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge and yeah but this is like the first three volumes are like the taster of the series that should be read to get kind of the gist of the story and then Queen's Quality is the continuation of that story but you kind of need to read them in tandem to get the most out of this series so I have actually not started it but obviously as you've seen in some of my hauls I got a lot of them due to them being on sale and then back here we have volumes 1 to 20 of Yona of the Thorn. I was collecting this a few years back, so I was able to collect 1 to 20. Yeah, so I've read up to volume 16 of Yona of the Thorn and I haven't continued since, but I am hoping to reread this series this year so that I can continue the story. I think we're up to like 35 volumes now. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep collecting them physically because collecting Yona of the Dawn is quite a commitment, mainly because some of the volumes are out of stock and quite hard to find. It's basically a story about a girl who lives in a palace and then one day her father gets killed by someone that she trusts and she has to escape the palace with one of her trusty steeds, Hack. And she goes on an adventure to find, I think it's the Seven Dragons to unite the kingdom once more and to take a rightful place. This is also an action romance shoujo series so I recommend this if you like action with a hint of romance. And here we have volumes 4 to 7, 10 to 12 and 14 to 16 of Requiem of the Rose King. This one has also been quite hard to find and get. The volume 1 just recently came back in stock so I purchased that and waiting for that to arrive to start this series but I've only had really good things about it and it's a bit of a darker grittier story as many people have said and then now we're coming on to our shonen shelf and we have the first three omnibuses of tokyo revengers i actually watched the anime for this and i didn't really enjoy the anime that much so i dropped the anime but a lot of people have said the manga is so much better so i decided to give the manga a shot and these volumes were really cheap on traveling man during the holiday sales so i picked up all three omnibuses and hoping to read this to see if it is better than the anime. And then we have Hell's Paradise 1, 3 to 13. So I pretty much collect finished collecting this series except for volume 2. Volume 2 is just nowhere to be seen unless you buy it 
for a little bit more pricier online and I kind of don't want to so I'm just waiting for volume 2 but I've read volume 1 and was really interested in it but because I don't have volume 2 it's kind of been holding me back from finishing it but I definitely want to finish this before the anime comes out because I feel like that will give me a better experience but yeah this is about a group of people who are exiled and instead of actually being killed they get a second chance at life on a paradise or hell's paradise where they have to find an elixir of life for the emperors or emperor and if they can they will be saved and they can go back to their loved ones and there's this main guy who wants to go back to his wife and so he participates in this challenge and then we have free run volumes one to six this one is a slice of life kind of magical series where it's about an elf who is basically lives for a very very long time and she watches a lot of her comrades and people that she got to know pass away before her and she kind of goes on this journey of life and she takes on an apprentice due to her friend's last wish and it kind of just follows their journey i've read up to volumes one and two and I heard this one is actually going on an indefinite hiatus at the moment, so I am probably going to be reading this slowly from now on because it would be sad not being able to know when it will ever finish. Next we have Moriarty the Patriot. This one is a retelling of Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty, Moriarty's side of the story. I think Moriarty was Sherlock's nemesis for many, many, many years. And... Yeah, it follows that story. And then here we have volumes 1 to 7, missing volume 4 of Spy Family. I think everyone knows Spy Family and it doesn't really need an introduction. But yeah, I have those and I'm still waiting for volume 4 to come back in stock. And now we're here on my, I guess, older shoujo shelf or older series shelf which has all my old tokyo pop volumes so we have dazzle here by minari endo this one i have volumes one to seven this one i think is still ongoing and it has like 24 volumes but obviously i never got to finish the collecting this series and i don't think it will ever be picked up because i don't think it's that popular this is one is about a girl who basically gets kicked out of her home by her dad because he says that she needs to fend for herself and go on an adventure to discover herself and i think she's only like 16 so it's kind of mad the story in my opinion but you know when i was a kid i was like oh this sounds fun and then she basically meets a stranger called azild who is this silver hair guy and they basically team up and go on adventures this one is actually very violent and it is quite gory yeah the story flows a little strangely and it's a bit weird because this girl is i think she's like yeah this girl is basically like 16 and she's traveling with like two adult guys so it is a little strange i probably wouldn't recommend this now now that i'm older but when i was a kid it was really intriguing and yeah but i really love about this is like the art the art style and like all the really cool outfits that she wears and then we have dn angel volumes 1 to 11 this one was also a super favorite of mine when i was a kid this one is about a boy who has the ability to change into a another character called dark so dark is this character basically steals artifacts from history and i'm not really sure why but it's something in their family tree that they end up passing down this ability to transform into dark and it has like a romance where he falls in love with this girl i think i don't remember her name but that girl actually falls in love with dark so it's yeah it's a strange story but then she also has a twin who falls in love with this guy called daisuke so yeah it's a lot of back and forth of like love triangles and unrequited love but it has a little bit of action in there as well with the artifacts and yeah i really enjoyed this and i am looking forward to rereading this again one day and then we have volumes one to six of gaku and alice you can see that these are all fading they're all different colors because they're just so old but yeah this one is about a school of magical users and this girl mikasa 
finds out that her best friend is moving and will be going to the school called Alice and she follows her because she wants to find her friend and then she finds out that she actually has also a ability due to some circumstances that happen and then she gets accepted into Alice and then it kind of follows her school journey. At first, due to her, the nature of her ability, a lot of people don't like her and shun her, but later she gets close to everyone and it's just a really fun series. I really love the anime. But yeah, here we have Kodacha Sana Stage Volumes 1 to 10 complete. This one is also a childhood favorite of mine and it's just a really classic story about growing up and learning to find yourself as well as first loves and all that stuff but it's basically about Sana who has a bully in her school and she tries to counter this bully and they kind of form a really special bond later due to a lot of events that happen in this story and I think it's a really great coming of age story and a lot of things happen and it's just a great, really lovely story and I recommend everyone to read it at least once. And then over here we have Tokyo Mimi and Tokyo Mimi a la Mode. This one is also a magical girl series about a girl who finds out that she is one of the reincarnations of a certain animal. She is a reincarnation of this cat and they basically fight this evil that's coming from this alien planet and she finds a band of friends who are also have that reincarnation. And then we're continuing my shoujo shelf here but I also have Surf of the End here because I didn't fit it before. But we start with Aishita who is a baby. This one is a really sweet story about a boy who ends up having to take care of a small kid because I think one of his aunts leave her behind. And then we have volumes 1 to 13 of Demon Prince of Momoji House. This is a story about a girl who basically inherits like a, a ancestral estate. And then she finds like three people there who are already living there. But they're not actually people. They're like spiritual people. And I think there's a guy there who actually is like a yokai. But he's like trapped there. So she decides that she's going to try to save him and find a way out for him. And then we have volumes 1 to 15 of Fushiki Yuki, The Mysterious Play. This one I also bought all of them used this year. I need to read her most famous series and I have read her other series, Absolute Boyfriend, and I remember enjoying that, so we'll see. And then over here we have volumes 1 to 13. I am missing volume 8 because I never finished collecting it, but I have 1 to 13 of my love story. I remember watching the anime for this and really enjoying it and then I read the manga a few years ago and also really enjoyed it but it's about a unconventional looking teenager who is who kind of is very butch, very manly, is not your typical be shonen that a lot of shoujo manga is based on and he basically falls in love with this girl and then she also reciprocates his feelings and they start dating and it's their story of what happens in their love life. It's really cute, it's really funny. Again, we have volumes 1 to 8 of Seraph of the End. This one is about like a vampire takeover and this guy's best friend turns into a vampire so they become um opposite sides of the kind of war between vampires and humans and on the bottom shelf of this one we have heartstopper volumes one and two this one is a graphic novel it is in a manga so and then we have wolf children which is based off the anime i feel like the anime is a lot better in my opinion than the manga so if you want to try this i would recommend watching the anime instead but it's about a woman who falls in love with a man who can turn into a wolf and then they end up having children and the children are having to decide whether they want to live as wolves or if they want to live as humans. And then we have volumes 1 and 2 of Fruits Basket. I actually watched the anime of Fruits Basket when I was younger and absolutely enjoyed it and loved it and I cried a lot. But I never actually read the manga so I started collecting it back a few years ago but I never finished collecting it. And I still need to read it, so 
I'm hoping this year I can that I can start getting into the series again and reliving that moment in my childhood. And then over here we have Josie, the tiger and the fish. This one is a heartfelt story about a paraplegic girl and her kind of story. And then we have My Love Makes Up 1 to 4. If you've watched my reading wrap up, you'll know I wasn't too impressed with this series. It is very cute and I do like the fact that it's a shoujo beat imprint and has a BL element to it. Yeah, the story is very high school in my opinion. Miscommunications and all that. And then we have Sakura Hime, which is by Arina Tanemura and I have the completed series volumes 1 to, the, 1 to 12. I also have not finished reading this. I think I've read the first two volumes but I actually wasn't super into it when I read it. I think Irina Tanamura has this problem with her series other than Full Moon where a lot of her characters look very similar so you get kind of confused and I think that it started off as a story where she's running away from a guy that she was supposed to be married off to and then I think she finds him later like in the forest and they fall in love and I just think I think that story sounds so typical so I haven't continued but I do need to finish it because I've had it on my shelf for a very long time and this is another series by Irina Tanemura Gentleman's Alliance this one I actually really enjoyed when I read it and finished it um, back in the day when I was younger and I started collecting it and they only have volumes one to five but I don't think I'll be finishing collecting this to be fair because I don't think I'll enjoy it as much as I did when I was younger and then we have Beasts of Abigail by Spika Aoki. This one is also by the same mangaka who, who did Kaiju Girl Caramelize. This one is completed at four volumes and I read it this year with another member of someone from the Discord. And I did enjoy it but I felt like it fell really short because it was so... Because it had only four volumes so I feel like there was a lot more that could be explored but it just fell flat because it was so short. But this one is about a girl who gets sent to Abigail, which is a place where these cat-like beings live and have to be guarded by the humans because obviously humans are evil and they want to control people who have magical abilities or look different. And she basically is trying to save these people and escape from this prison. And then we have a Jose two volume series I think more chapters are being released for this one which I'm really excited about because I really enjoy this but it's daily report about my witch senpai and this one is a really cute short story about two colleagues who kind of form a relationship and one of them is a witch and it's super cute really recommend that and then I have another one shot volume i want to eat your pancreas and i think this is about a girl who has pancreatic cancer so i think this is a very heartfelt story and then we have volumes one and two of the complete collection of orange and this one is about a girl who gets sent letters from her future telling her about things that will happen to their friend and new transfer student and saying they have to save him and it's it's an interesting story about time loop and I am really enjoy I really enjoyed the first volume but I still haven't continued the second one so I need to continue this and we're doing a buddy read on this on discord so I need to get into that and then we have become you by the same author I think this is about a guy who is trying to pursue a musical career but I don't really remember much because I read it ages ago. so moving on we have my where most of my LGBTQ plus manga reside. So we have mostly on this shelf is BL. So we've got Cherry Magic 1 to 3. I actually have Cherry Magic 1 to 5, but I one of my colleagues is currently borrowing 4 and 5. So that's why those are missing. This is probably one of my favorite BL stories at the moment, ongoing ones. And the title is a little strange, as you can see, but it is one of the most wholesome BL stories that I've read. It does have an explicit content warning, but actually it doesn't have any explicit content at all so far. It's about a guy who, when they turn 30, they become a wizard so they can hear what people are thinking when they touch them or have contact with them. And he is working in this company with this guy and they end up touching each other on an elevator and he 
can read his mind and finds out that he actually has had a crush on this guy for a very long time. And he's really popular, so he's like, why does he even like me? And then it kind of follows that story, and it's really, really cute. And super recommend this one if you're looking for a wholesome BL series. And the next one is My Summer of You Volumes 1 and 2. This one is also the wrong way around. But yeah, I think this one is a wholesome BL so story as well about high school students. I'm not 100% sure what this one is about, but I picked it up because I heard some good things about it. And then I have Restart After Coming Back Home and Restart After Growing Hungry. This one is also a two volume series. I think it was a one shot and then they came out with a second volume. I think this is about someone who comes back to their hometown and I meet a guy who was adopted into the community that he used to be in and they start a friendship bond and it's just a really sweet and wholesome story. I also need to read this one. Heard so many good things about it but and then the next one we have is the other world's books depend on the bean counter this one is the first bl is a kai that i've gotten so i know there's another one that is a little bit more on the 18 plus side but this one is about an accountant who gets isekai into another world and he still is pretty much a workaholic even though he gets into another world and then he forms a bond with this guy i'm not 100 sure what the story entails but excited and had lots of good things about this one and then next i have on this shelf is sasaki amiano volumes one to six this one is a really cute story about two high school students i think this guy is a senpai and this one is a kohai and he is also a fudanshi who reads bl and he kind of ships his classmates who are in this story who are roommates and this guy starts getting an interest in the main guy and he starts asking about BL and asking to recommend stories so that he can start getting closer to him and it just follows their cute high school story and romance. And the next one as I mentioned is Hirana and Kaigiro. This one is about two sides characters in the main story Sasaki and Miyano and they're basically roommates and I think it follows their story as well. And here we have I Hear The Sunspot. This one is a story about a deaf guy in school who forms a bond with one of his classmates. And yeah, it's a really cute story. I read this a while ago, so I don't remember exactly what happens, but I think it's just them forming a friendship as well as start romantic relationship with each other. But it's really cute. And then we have volumes 1, 2, and 3 of Classmates. This one I also read a long time ago, so I don't remember much about it. But this is by Asumiko Nakamura, which also does the other GL series that I've mentioned on this channel before. And yeah, this one is also a high school BL. And I think they have initially not so great opinions of each other, but then find out that this guy is actually working hard to try and improve his singing and then he sees that and then they kind of start a friendship and then a relationship and then we have this one shot our dining table this one is super cute i read this one last year and this one is about a guy who has kind of some trauma about eating with other people i don't rem remember what that was but he basically runs into this kid and shares a rice ball with him and then this kid has a brother and then they kind of start forming a friendship and they start inviting him over for dinner together and it's just kind of the conversations they have while they're having dinner together so it's really cute i really like the kid in this and it's super sweet i highly recommend reading this one and it's because it's a one shot it's not too much commitment either so if you're looking for a sweet bl story i would recommend this one and then over here we have some of my gl so first series we have is donuts under a crescent moon currently don't have space on the shelf to fit it but i have one two and three of donuts under a crescent moon and this story is a really cute gl series about two office workers who start bonding and this girl is trying to find love but she doesn't feel the same love she has like other people towards men and she starts getting closer to one of her colleagues and things happen from there it's really cute i would recommend definitely if you're looking for a 
more adult GL series. Not adult as in explicit, but more about older characters. And then I have the Kaze-san series. So I have most of the first part of the series and then the second part of the series, Kaze-san and Yamada, which is when they're in college. And this is still an ongoing series and I still haven't found one that I need. But this one is a high school romance story between an established couple and just their lives and story progression as they're in high school. And then the Yamada one is when they're in college. And then next we have is Chasing After A Aokushiba. I think this one is also a high school romance. GL, I have not read this one, but I've heard good things about it. And then we have Whisper Me A Love Song Volume 1 to 5. This one is a GL about music. And then we have another Girls Love series, How Do We Relationship. This one is also a really good one and a really nice and realistic portrayal of a GL relationship between two college students. This one is a little bit more hard hitting rather than fluffy. So yeah, it has a little bit more realistic elements as well as the trials and tribulations of being in a relationship with the opposite sex. Yeah, recommend this one and really enjoy this one. And volume 8 is coming out this month, so excited to continue it. And then continuing some of my BL, we have The Vampire and His Pleasant Companions. I'm not too sure what other things entail in this story, but looking forward to trying a vampire BL. And then we have my Koyonada section here, my small one, which is Twittering Birds Never Fly 1 to 6. This one is a Yakuza BL story, and it is this one is a little bit of a hard hitting and grittier story. Definitely 18 plus on this one. And then we have The Art of Yoko for Eternity in a second. This one is a really, really nice BL art book. And then we have the rest of Koyonada's one shots. We have Nights, which is by Sublime and it is a collection of short stories. I also really like this one. And then this is not Koyona, but it's Seven Days. This is by, I think, the same artist who did Ten Count, which I don't really like. But this one is about a guy who always agrees to date someone. And when they do, he dates them for seven days. So for a week and then, then he breaks up with them. And one day a guy asks him to go on a date with him for a week. And they do and they end up starting to like each other. And then we have two other one shots by Koyonada. Even so, I will love you tenderly and no touching at all. This one is the first of the two one shots that you should read because side characters in here become main characters in here. And this is my favorite BL series ever. I talked about this once because I was talking about turning birds. This is my favorite BL one shot. It's just really sweet and it's about an office worker who falls in love with a guy that usually is into females and they form a friendship for around three years before he ultimately confesses his love for his friend and things like that happen and it's really sweet i just love it and down here we have a tropical fish yearns for snow but yeah this one is about two high school students who bond over an aquarium club so this girl is the person who does the aquarium club and and she later joins because she asks her to and yeah they form a friendship and then we have i'm in love with the villainous volumes one two and three this one is a villainous gl and then we have thigh high one to three this one is a kind of gag manga and just follows this high school lives with a bunch of guys and they have like cute skirts on and then we have a small portion of my Tokyo Pop BL, Dekoboko Bittersweet Days and Dekoboko Sugar Days. This one is also a high school BL, which I have not read, but I heard lots of great things about it and it looks cute. And then we have Fangs 1 and 2. This one I got because it was highly recommended by a few YouTubers on here who do like BL. And this one is also a vampire BL story. And then we have Koi Monogatari Volumes 1 and 2. This is also a slow burn story of high school students. And then we have Yagi the Bookshop Goat, which is a BL story about a sheep and a wolf 
who both work in a bookshop and this guy likes eating books because when he eats them he he can understand what the story is about obviously he has a hard time finding a job because he does that but then this guy gives him a job and they work at a bookshop and get closer I personally didn't really find this one that amazing so and over here I have my sublime shelf and I've got candy color paradox one and two this one I also got due to some recommendations from a youtuber that I really like but I think this is about photography and then given volumes one to six this one is a musical drama story between a band of characters and I think some of the later volumes focus on some side characters but I read volume one and I did find it was already quite dramatic but yeah it's about music and I think the anime is really popular so and I've got links which is also I think it's a collection of short stories by the same person who did Given and then we've got Midnight by CTK this one is a new release that I recently got but I said it in my haul I don't know if it's out yet but I basically got this because the male characters have facial hair and I found that really rare so that's why I got it but I heard it's a bit of a darker grittier story so excited to read that and then we have Secret XXX and Therapy became 1-2 and Therapy became Restart which is all part of like the same universe Secret XXX follows a guy who works at a pet store but he is actually allergic to pets and then he gets closer to the shop owner and things happen from there this one was cute but not amazing people say that therapy game is a lot better so i need to start this to be fair but i haven't as you can see because it's still passing around this one follows the story of some of the side characters in here this is some people's favorite bl series so that's why i picked it up and then we have one to five of jealousy which i bought for a really good price and i also heard that this this is also a really popular bl series that people enjoy so i picked that up as well and then we have love in limbo volume one and two which is a supernatural bl and then moving on to this shelf we have the entirety of bungo stray dogs one to ten then I'm missing 11 and we've got 12, 13 and then missing some volumes in between. And then we have Bungo Stray Dogs Beast and Bungo Stray Dogs 1. And then we have another story and Stray Apple. So this is pretty much my Bungo Stray Dogs shelf. But it's about two kind of opposing parties which is the detective agency and the port mafia and they're pretty much battling it out in this society and a lot of them have very interesting abilities that they use and it's kind of about mysteries solving mysteries as well as getting down to the bottom of the port mafia's uh, motive and trying to stop them from taking the main guy atsushi he has a really strong and interesting ability that the port mafia are really interested in that's why they're trying to take him away there's a lot of character development in this one and a lot of different characters so i don't think i've met everyone yet but there are a few favorites already i have and i've ordered a few nendroids of this series so yeah i'm getting into it and then over here we have a lot of random volumes of things we have some manhua here so some of the translated oh this one's upside down so we have some of the translated manhua here and then i think a lot of these are like seinen but yeah we have the daughter of the emperor which i also haven't started yet and then we have magical jr this one is a really old manhua that got translated so it's like you can see it's like super yellow but yeah i'm not 100 percent sure what this one is about but i remember loving the art style of it as you can see it's very cute and a new release i recently got was my jenny raised beast i think this is about kind of a loner girl who has a pet and then later the pet turns into a guy and then we have villains are destined to die this is a villainous manhua this one is really popular i need to get to this one soon and then we have why reliana ended up at the duke's mansion this one is also i think a 
arranged marriage plot but i'm not 100 percent sure but this one is also really popular so i need to get to that and then we have the remarried empress which is a really cool story i read the first volume and then started reading it on the app but yeah this st cover is so stunning but basically it's about an empress and an emperor who are put in kind of a political marriage marriage of convenience to kind of unite these parties and also bring a stronghold to the, the kingdom but then the emperor actually ends up taking in a mistress which kind of upsets that balance that they've had and then she gets closer to another person from another kingdom and then the emperor ends up wanting to divorce this lady later for the mistress but then she comes around and be like okay well then i'm going to remarry this person from another kingdom and it is really really fun and good and the side characters are so annoying like the emperor and his mistress are just i want to put them in the trash but they are so like hateable and the story is just so compelling because you need to find out what happens next and you, she, you're really rooting for her and yeah i really recommend this one and then we have the yakuza's guide to babysitting this one is about a girl who is born into a yakuza family and then her father ends up telling this guy to look after her kid his kid and then we have yakuza fiance raise watanaga e volume one this is also a recent release and it's also a yakuza story and i think it's a little bit more grittier and it's not a typical love story but everyone has been talking about it and enjoying it so i'm excited to try that one and then i have volumes one and two of kowloon generic romance this one is a interesting story set in kowloon hong kong and it has like a sci-fi twist to it which is really intriguing i really really love the covers i pretty much collecting this for the covers and the art style and then we have a galaxy next door which also has a interesting sci-fi element to it but it's about a mangaka who needs a assistant and then this person recommends this assistant and the assistant is actually from another world and there is a romance that ensues in this one as well and then we have the splendid work of a monster maid this one was recommended by cake tins she has been enjoying this and i realize it's also the wrong way round i'm sorry about that and then we have kubo won't let me be invisible this one is a seinen but it is printed by shonen jump but it's about a girl who basically likes a guy that is invisible to everyone else but she sees him for who he is and always notices him and yeah it's kind of cute nothing too special in my opinion and see you tomorrow at the food court it's about two girls who are quite an unlikely pair so one is kind of like a garu and one is like a really nerdy school girl and they both meet up at the food court and talk to each other about lots of stuff and play games together and then we have unnamed memory which is based on a light novel this one is this one is about a king i think he basically goes to this ca castle and on the top of the tower it's said that there is someone who will grant his wishes so he goes to that tower and then finds a girl there and then and i think there is like a marriage proposal or something but i'm not really sure and then we have touring the uh, touring after the apocalypse basically an ap apocalypse happens and then these two girls are touring what is left after the apocalypse and i think they meet some people along the way and then over here we have laid back camp volumes 1 and 12 and i think there's some volumes missing in between it's all over the place because i recently took these out to take pictures of them so sorry about that but this one is a slice of life camp story about a group of friends who go camping and also eat food and make food and the third part of this shelf we have a bright story one to two in hardback this one is a story about a woman i think who marries a 12 year old boy out of i think it's like a arranged marriage but it's not creepy at all in that way and it just kind of shows you some of the happenings in this type of clan and society and it's really quite educational 
and also interesting to have this outlook on different people's lives and yeah and this one it it kind of tells a story about like a nomadic tribe and kind of what sort of things happen and go on in this tribe and it's really cool in terms of learning about the culture and the art style is stunning the detail i definitely recommend trying this one out even though the premise seems a little iffy but yeah really good and then we have nightfall travelers which is about two high school students going on travels at nighttime to haunted places and then we have intense volume one to four which is a bl story it's a manhwa and this one is also kind of a grittier, sadder, yakuza type story. And yeah, I am i don't remember too much about this story and what happens, but it is really good. I remember really enjoying it. So I would recommend trying this one out if you like Koyonadas. Twittering Birds Never Fly, it kind of has a say, similar feeling. And then we have volume one of On or Off, which is also a BL series about to office workers here we have a little bit more um, gl because i couldn't fit it on my shelf over there so we have a white rose in bloom which is by asumiko nakamura who did classmates this one is also a high school gl series and the art style looks really cool and then we have goodbye my rose garden which is a historical girl's love about it's about this maid and the person she works for and i think she's in a very unhappy marriage and then they start bonding and falling in love and then we have futari escape which is a really cute gl slice of life series this one has hints of romance at the moment in the first volume but nothing substantial yet but it's basically about two friends kind of going on adventures and doing things so that they can avoid real life issues and problems that they are in very cute story and then we have young ladies don't play fighting games this one also alludes to agl romance but hasn't made any references to it yet but this one is about two girls who bond over fighting games and then we have apothecary diaries volumes one to seven this one has a lot of political intrigue and interesting mysteries that is woven into the story but it's about a apothecary mau mau who gets sent to the court as a servant but then ends up figuring out some mysteries and then gets appointed as the food taster for one of the ladies in court i feel like i'm not explaining this series very well but it is really good i would definitely recommend trying this one out and i think a lot of people have talked about this one but the hype is actually very warranted in my opinion for this series so and if you like Chinese court drama or Korean court dramas, I think you would like this one as well. And then we have one to six of Skip and Loafer here. This one is also a slice of life high school series. This one is also a seinen. But yeah, it's about this country bumpkin girl who goes to the city and starts a new life there. And she meets a lot of people around there and yeah it just kind of follows their high school journey and i think these two start forming a friendship and an unlikely pairing and then we have tokyo aliens by now this one is also by square enix manga and this one is like a shonen action series but it's about like aliens and a society that tries to monitor aliens on earth because they live among humans as normal people and there is a main character who finds out this world exists and realizes that he is closer to this organization than he thought and it kind of follows that i actually really enjoyed this first volume so i'm looking forward to the next installment and then moving on down here we have volume one of dinosaur sanctuary this one is a dinosaur manga which i got because some people on discord were talking about it and yeah it looked interesting and then we have one to five or blue period this one is quite a hard-hitting series is about finding you know motivation to do what you love as well as finding your meaning in life and i think it's about your passions and pursuing your dreams even though you go through a lot of obstacles and things that are blocking your way 
And then we have one of my favorite Stain and series, Sweat and Soap. This one is a Stain and Romance, and it's super, super good. Like the title alone and some of the covers, like the earlier covers, are a little bit sus. Like, what is that? But it is really good. It it follows two people who work at the same company. One of them has a sweating problem, but she really, really loves all the soaps that are made at the company she works for and then one day she's looking at this soap and being really happy and i think she releases some type of pheromone and this guy who actually does a lot of making of the soaps and product marketing i think he smells her and is like oh my gosh you smell so good we need to do research on your scent so that we can make the best soap ever and then so she agrees and he basically starts smelling her every day to research and it the premise is really weird and the story starts moving really fast at the beginning because this was actually a one shot but then it got serialized into a full length series so that's why it seems a bit rushed at first but then it kind of slows down in the later volumes and this one is like the healthiest romance that i've ever read ever like healthier than some of the shoujo romances that i've read which is crazy so i definitely think if you're looking for a adult romance i would definitely check this out it's super super good one of my top favorites all-time favorite series that i've read and then we're here we have one dance by coffee this one is a seinen series that is about break dance hip-hop dance i think and it's a guy who sees a girl dancing and then gets inspired to try it and then i think it follows that and then here we have volumes 1 to 11 or 1 to 10 of witch hat atelier this one is also a series that i am hoping to read this year because because actually because they have been collecting the volumes and not reading them so <laughs> i definitely need to start this but it's about a girl who finds out the secrets of actually possessing as well as casting magic and because she finds out this secret she gets taken away to the academy of witches and follows her story and the adventures there and then the bottom of the shelf here we have my broken mariko this one is about a girl who has a friend that ends up dying or committing suicide and she takes her ashes on a journey of rediscovering life together and yeah i think it's a journey of healing and also acceptance and then we have the eternal editions of sailor moon i think i have one to six these are super heavy also not in order sorry about that that's gonna happen a lot here and then we have the collector's editions of card captor sakura one to nine these are stunning editions really stunning they're super pretty and it has like gold foiling and everything and then over here we have the girl from the other side and these are the deluxe editions the girl from the other side is about a girl who ends up getting taken care of by this creature and i think there's like two worlds and this girl steps over this other world something like that but i heard it is quite a sad and hard-hitting story so really looking forward to reading the deluxe editions of these because they're stunning and then here i have just a really small collection of my darn may so we got the scum villain self-saving system these are both series by mxtx so i've got one two of the scums villain and then one of heaven's official blessing i think heaven's official blessing is one of their most popular series and here we've got the start of my korean manhwa section so we've got Kukute in the God, which is at the end of the road or at the end of what lies at the end. This one is a BL series and this one is really good. It is kind of confusing in terms of how I can explain what it is about. But yeah, I read this quite a while ago on the lesson app and it was really really good i can't really explain the story because i don't remember much but i remember it being really good so yeah definitely check it out online for a synopsis then i have shinif's hawan which is the new employee or the new recruit this one is an office romance another bl story i haven't read this one yet but i'm hoping to get started on this soon 
and then I have my Dangerous Convenience Store calendar here and a new recruit keychain. So here's the rest of my small manhwa collection. So these are Korean. These are all in the Korean language and this is Kingsmaker 1, 2 and 3. This is the first, first volumes of the series and then we have Kingsmaker Triple Crown 1 to 7. This is a manhwa with a lot of political intrigue. It's about a guy. He is looking to take his rightful place on the throne and this guy is there to help him. I ended up splurging and picking up everything there was and support this this series. And then I have Sane Matsun, which is business proposal. I don't know. I think it was the manha uh, manha first, and then and then it turned into a K drama. I absolutely love the K drama of this, so I decided to get some special editions nine and ten, and it came with a lot of match. So I picked those up. And then I also have Semantic Error, which is a manhwa, a BL manhwa. I also watched the K-drama drama mini series of this and it was really good. I love the actors in there. I feel like they did a really good job. And I actually started reading this a little bit, but obviously because my Korean is a little bit slow, it's been taking me a bit of time to read because I can read, but I'm just really slow at reading. And... Yeah, I'm excited to read this in manhwa format because I really enjoyed the web series. And then I have volumes 1 and 2 of We Are Man Penny Jam, which is Dangerous Convenience Store by 945. This one I got as a package as well with lots of merch like this one and a few other photo cards and holographic cards. And yeah, this one is a really cute story about a guy who works at a convenience store which a lot of scary people like thugs and gangpe. Gangpe is kind of like the equivalent of yakuza he basically works at that convenience store and then he meets this guy and we call him ajashi and basically constantly visits this guy to get like cigarettes and stuff and then they end up forming a bond with each other and start a more like physical relationship but then realizes that they actually might like each other romantically and yeah it's really cute i can see why people might find it a little iffy because it does start off a little bit strange and also people think that he is a little bit aggressive but i really like this series and i had to get it in korean and now we're at pretty much the last of my main shelf and over here we've got my Aosaki Saka section. I think if you watched my reorganization video you might have seen me shelf these but we've got Aoharu Ride and this one is a pretty classic shoujo romance story and I feel like a lot of people who read shoujo know Aosaki Saka. She is dubbed kind of the queen of shoujo. And I do really like Aoharu Ride, but I do find that it, her stories are very young and very high school. So I would say that if you like fluffy romances with a little bit of drama and angst, you can try these out. I prefer Aoharu Ride out of all the ones that she's written. And I recently read Love Me, Love Me Not, but I definitely preferred Aoharu Ride. I really liked Strobedge when I first read it, but I was a lot younger back then and I did try to reread it and it was a little bit annoying. But I reread Aohara Ride recently and really enjoyed it. So I would recommend this one out of all her series. But it's basically a high school romance story about a girl who meets this guy during her middle school days and she kind of has a fear of guys but this guy is a little bit different. She kind of starts liking him but he later moves away without telling anyone and then a few years later they meet back in high school and it's a story about first loves and rekindling love and then as i mentioned we have love me love me not here I have a lot of mixed feelings about this i feel like there was a story at the beginning of these volumes that i did not enjoy and then things are happening here yeah i just need to finish 11 and 12 and i finished it and i don't really recommend this series considering so many people I, I talked to said they preferred this over Aohara Ride and I was like I did not enjoy this so but this one is about two girls who realize that they live in the same apartment complex and they start a really 
lovely friendship and then obviously two boys come into the picture and a lot of stuff happens there is a step sibling plot in here that kind of gets resolved but i still did not like it and then we have one to six of strobe edge this one is also about a girl kind of falling head over heels for one of the guys in her high school but he is already going out with someone and so there's a lot of conflict there so another high school shoujo romance and then we have full moon by arina tanemura this this one is a classic in my opinion and one of the best works of arina tanemura in my opinion and it follows a girl who has a throat cancer so but she really loves singing and she gets reprieve from this condition by some shinigami so that she can pursue her dreams and career as a musician and singer and later she will get taken away after she's fulfilled this dream so yeah it's really good it's really cute i haven't reread it but i read it multiple times when i was younger but yeah recommend this one if you want to try a shoujo romance with a twist and then we have all the volumes of sailor moon and then the second shelf on this bookcase we have blue flag volumes one two eight this is also not organized properly okay so i reorganized it in case anyone got upset with me about it but yeah blue flag one to eight this one is also a high school kind of slice of life story about coming of age as well as discovering who you are and what you want to do in life after you graduate but it also has a bit of lgbtq plus elements so i will not delve further into that in case of spoilers i also didn't find it as hard hitting as some people said so i did enjoy it but i felt like it was really rushed here at the end and there was a lot more that could have been delved into in terms of the story so yeah, I wish that there was maybe like an extra volume to show us how the development or the conclusion of this came to fruition because I feel like things just happened suddenly and it was like, okay. And then we have volumes 1, 2, one, two 3 and 5 of Haikyuu. Haikyuu is actually my all-time favorite anime. Like, it is my number one anime. I love it so much. Season 3 is like so good and I have held up collecting this series in manga format because it is a long series and i don't know if i can commit to that at the moment i'm super ha happy to have some of these volumes and i do have a lot of these figures and if you guys have watched haikyuu or like haikyuu tell me who your favorite character is mine is kuro and tsukishima so yeah but yeah this one is a sports shonen series about volleyball and it follows a band of characters who look to win at the nationals and regionals competitions and it is super good and the music and animation is great in the anime if you want to watch and then i have one to six of noragami this one is about a like a kind of like a like a side god called yato and he is kind of poor because no one worships him and then he kind of gets involved in with this human girl i don't really exactly remember because it's been a while since i read it but i never continued this series so yeah and then we have one two three and then five to twenty of food wars food wars was one of my favorite ongoing shonen series back in the day and i absolutely love the anime i found it like so funny and i know it has a lot of fan service and i actually didn't mind that mainly because i felt like the fan service kind of went both ways where the guys also you know you see them have those reactions when they eat food too i also really love manga and anime about cooking and food so yeah i really enjoyed it and here's my mito figure who is my favorite character in this series but yeah this one is about food and all the things that happen in a, an elite culinary school and this guy who is pretty much the son of a, a man who owns like a small family restaurant and then he gets admitted into this elite school and then he tries to figure out all these obstacles that come with like elitism and cooking and he just makes a lot of friends along the way and yeah it was really good i have stopped collecting it though since because it was also ongoing at the time and i never knew when it finished 
And then over here, I have my <laughs> Nia Automata slash Nia franchise, Nia replicant shelf. This pretty much holds everything about this franchise. And it, if you didn't know and haven't watched my videos already, I am a really big Nia Automata as well as Nia franchise fan. And I played Nia Automata and Nia replicant. I haven't played Nia Gestalt, which is the original of Nia replicant, and I haven't played any of the Draken Guard, but I do remember watching my friends play it when I was younger. So, but Nia Automata is my all time favorite game. I have Nia Automata on PS4, Switch, and also on PC. So, yeah, I'm obsessed. And then this one is the vinyl that I recently unboxed on my channel. And then we have some of the acrylic standees of Kainé. And then we have Emil here. And then we have this 2B figure and it is stunning. And then we have also 2B Nendroid and Kainé Nendroid. And then obviously Yona from Neo Replicant. And then we have here the Neo Automata Yora Boys, which is a light novel. And then we have the new Neo Automata Story manga. And then we have the art book of Nia. So it pretty much includes all the art of Nia and Nia Replicant, Nia Reincarnation, and it is stunning. So yeah, this is my little Nia shrine. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping to add more to this as I have a few more Nendros and figures coming. So you'll see this evolving. And then behind here, I do have some manga and it is the volumes one to eight of number six. This one is a dystopian manga which is about a pretty much perfect world called number six but it is not as perfect as as people assume there's a lot more going on there and there's a lot more evil going on there than people assume and there is two people who basically try to uncover the secrets of number six and there is kind of a BL element to this as well so it's interesting and then we've got Subaki Cho Lonely Planet by Mika Yamamori this one is volume one and it focuses on kind of a live-in household type situation where this this high school girl has a lot of debt due to her father and her father pretty much runs away on a boat to make money and then she has to do a live-in household for a writer and yeah there is a relationship that blossoms there and then we have imaginary yeah i just put them there because i need something to prop up my vinyl and then we have this second last shelf over here which holds all my children of the whales volumes as you can see a lot of these are new so i pretty much purchased 2 to 20 recently on a traveling man sale and that video will be coming soon but yeah children of the whales i also have not started but i pretty much mentioned this in a previous haul that i started collecting it because i know it's going to be finishing and it is a shoujo series and it is about a group of people who live in a kind of moving island called mud whale and some of them have these special abilities but with these abilities comes consequences where as they use these abilities their lives are shortened and they are pretty much secluded from the outside world but some of the people who live there do actually want to explore and everything kind of takes off when they find a stranger on the island who actually knows more about their society than people thought and then over here i have in the clear moonlit dusk a lot of the newer releases that I got aren't really in the right place, but I just slotted them in because I had nowhere to put them. But this one is a high school romance by Mika Yamamori about two high school students who are dubbed the princes of the school because they are very handsome, but one is actually a girl, but they do call her prince because she's tall and has kind of androgynous look. But then he comes along the other prince and kind of sees her as a bit more feminine and girly. And then over here we have a few volumes of Banana Fish. So I have 1 to 4 and then 7, 11 to 12 and then 15 and 17. I am collecting this and I have bought a few volumes online so I will be nearly finishing this. But this is also one of the series that I want to fin finish collecting this year. So hopefully that happens. But reprints are... On their way so that's really good 
but this one is a shoujo beat series a little bit more grittier as well but it focuses on time in the 80s in new york and it's about a mysterious drug called banana fish which is kind of taking over this society as well as within these gangs and there is one guy who is trying to solve the mysteries of that and he partners up with a japanese guy and they try to solve the mysteries of banana fish and then we have over here the art book of toilet bound hana cocoon and then volumes 1 to 16 of toilet bound hana cocoon the covers and the spines on this series are amazing but this one i watched the anime for and i also really enjoyed so i started collecting the manga and I am actually going to do a body read of this starting soon. So really excited about that. So hopefully I enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the anime. And then the last series I have on here at the moment is Wake Up Sleeping Beauty Volumes 1 to 6. I recently got this series on Vinted. I found the whole series for a really good price. It was around £36 for one Volumes 1 to 6. And considering this is quite hard to find, it's an amazing price. But yeah, this one I actually don't know much about. But I heard a few people talking about it and really enjoying it. And it's also by Megumi Morino, which is also the mangaka who did a condition called love which is releasing this month so i'm super happy to have this series in my collection and it was a bargain so i couldn't pass it up we've got volumes 1 to 18 of the whole set of Oren high school host club this was obviously one of my favorite childhood animes back in the day and i absolutely loved it i think there are some problematic elements in here that probably won't be great in today's society but i'm interested to read this series and see how it holds up and then i have some series here that is in my trolley because i am planning to get rid of these um, but I have Prince Freya Volume 1 to 3. I really didn't enjoy this series much. So I'm trying to sell this. And then Vampires, which is a vampire GL, which is also a little bit strange. If you want to hear my thoughts on this, definitely check out one of my November reading logs. Or was it October reading log? I think it was my October reading log. But yeah, I think that wraps up my manga collection tour. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I know it was probably really long but i hope you enjoyed and i hope there was some series that interested you after watching thank you as always for the support on my videos i'm excited to film more and also share with you more of my manga collection and manga collecting journey if you enjoyed this video please like comment and subscribe it would mean a lot to me and yeah Thank you so much for staying till the end if you did and definitely give me some of your recommendations down below of series you think I should start collecting next. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!